Great. So, hello, everyone. Uh, very good afternoon to folks joining us from MENA region. And good evening to those joining us from South Asia and Far East. I'm Amrita Nayak, Program Director at XED. Extremely happy to connect with you and thank you for taking interest in Cornell's Executive Program in Management. Appreciate your time to learn about uh, the program, to think about it, mm -hmm. and think about what it might be like for you, your career, or the network of people that you will connect with as part of this program. Today, we are extremely glad to have with us Devin Beginners, who's joining us from New York. And before I hand over to Devin, would like to share a few thoughts. As leaders of tomorrow, one needs to learn and unlearn continuously. You will need to build deep expertise and wide range of knowledge base to survive in this VUCA world. To thrive in this ecosystem, you need to build right mindset and expertise, which this program is designed to offer. And to give you a better understanding of the program, I'm calling upon Devin, who's a director at Cornell. Uh, at Cornell, Devin has several years of experience in designing and delivering educational solutions for clients across the globe. So without any further ado, Devin, I hand over the mic to you. Great. Thank you so much, Emerud. And, and good, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning from New York here. Great example of a, a global program when it's, uh, it is morning time for me, afternoon and evening, depending on where in the world you're, you're, you're zooming in or joining from. So uh, thank you so much, Amruta, um, for that introduction. Um, we are thrilled to be offering the next cohort of the Cornell Executive Program in Management in close partnership with, with XED. Um, this is a, a non-degree program, but nonetheless an important program for lifelong learning um, and for continued development. Um, Amruta, as you, as you mentioned, the world is constantly evolving at a very VUCA rate or a very rapid rate, exponentially even in, some, in many industries. And so one's ability to, to unlearn, learn, um, at a rapid pace is, is a critical one. Um, and so that's certainly uh, core to the work we do at Cornell um, in these types of programs, whether it's for one single organization um, or it's for um, this type of program, which connects multiple industries. So um, as Amruta said, I'm the director of custom live programs within the integrated area of Cornell University um, and have been with Cornell about nine years. And I've worked in the industry of, of custom executive education and executive development uh, leadership development programs for about 18 years. Um, and so really thrilled to be able to partner um, to design this program. We've also learned a lot from the previous cohorts about how to make this a dynamic, vir uh, virtually enabled, synchronous, asynchronous program. Um, and so what I'm going to do is share a few thoughts with you here, um, walk you through a few slides, talking about sort of the, the genesis of this program and how it matters to you um, as an individual in your learning journey and your career development um, coming uh, from Cornell University. Um, and then we'll open it up to a few questions that I know you can ask. And then Amruta will um, wrap up with um, sharing a few closing thoughts as well as answering any questions that have come up. So um, the you can probably tell that there's an interesting contrast between what you see primarily on screen, which is our Cornell's main campus in Ithaca, New York, in upstate New York, where, where I live. Um, but my background here, as you can see on, uh, on the Zoom or on the, the webinar session, is our Cornell Tech campus in New York City. This is Roosevelt Island. Um, and so I think this juxtaposition is, from Cornell's perspective, is, is a very good one to illustrate the, the different breadths of expertise coming from the physical locations, whether it's upstate New York, a more rural uh, primary campus, uh, this was our first campus, to our new 10-year-old uh, campus now at Cornell Tech on Roosevelt Island. So um, if you're wondering why there's different backgrounds that I'm, that I'm showing here, that, that, that's why. So, so I'll give you a bit of a background because I think it is relevant to this as we understand the world is progressing in a more multidisciplinary way. Um, it used to be the challenges perhaps fell more within one certain area, right? A marketing challenge or a finance challenge or a strategy challenge. Um, Cornell about two years ago took the pretty bold move for a, a Ivy League uh, research university to integrate all executive education capabilities under Cornell external education. Um, in close partnership with eCornell. Um, and so I was previously sitting as executive director of custom programs within the Ed Cornell SC Johnson College of Business, but we also took our ILR school, Cornell Tech, the law school, um, and other schools um, and integrated them under one enterprise, primarily to offer these types of programs and also serve a much broader 
uh, group of clients and organizations and individuals that understand that solutions have to be multidisciplinary, right? You have to tap into expertise across the university. So I think you'll see that as a key part of how we've designed this program. Um, you get the breadth and depth of Cornell um, in terms of the expertise across the different schools, primarily coming from business or uh, Cornell Tech or ILR, but also in relevant industries as we think about our capabilities as an organization, as we try to adapt to the world that you live in every day around multidisciplinary and what this might what this might look like. One of the key models that I want to encourage you to think about, um, and we think this comes directly from the digitally enabled, rapidly changing world, is this product management mindset. And so what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is there's this notion that's been around for a few years called T-shaped leadership, right? And what that means, if you haven't heard that, is how do you go both deep and be a technical expert in whatever that is, right? Whether you're an HR leader, you're a finance leader, you're running a product line, you're running a geography, you need to be able to go deep in that product, right? Or that area or that unit or that function. But increasingly, you also, at the same time, have to be able to go wide, right? You have to be able to understand the breadth of expertise, right? Um, classic example of this from a technology product management mindset um, is, is Jeff Bezos at Amazon. There, he can go miles deep on Kindle, on Amazon Video, on Amazon Web Services, but he's also legendary for his ability to go wide across how do all those pieces connect, right? So how does video feed um, Amazon Prime or how does Prime utilize AWS? So it's that ability to go wide and go, go wide and then go deep that is critical from a technology standpoint and I think is at the heart of what we were trying to design the program around your ability to be able to go deep and go wide, whatever that might mean for you, but increasingly that T, your T has to get bigger, right? Um, as you think about what that is, that's a core founding mission of Cornell Tech in developing leaders to understand how to adapt to this digitally enabled world, but also the ability to connect from a strategic standpoint. So I encourage you as you're thinking about either enrolling in this program or if you've already enrolled and you're just confirming what to expect, we're going to focus on this ability to go wide and go deep, right? Um, and so hopefully you'll see that embedded as we walk through the, the content here. Um, I've mentioned Cornell Tech a few times, and I think it's it's helpful to understand where what Cornell Tech is as you think about as a part of Cornell University. Um, it was founded uh, about 10 years ago, as you said, but the bid was actually awarded about that time ago um, by the mayor of New York City, Michael Bloomberg. Um, to develop a technology-enabled campus in the heart of New York City, right? The thought was New York City's economy might be too dependent on one or two industries. Um, and he the, the, the vision was to build this different campus. And I mentioned this, and I'm spending a few seconds here on this, because I think it does embed what the, where the world is going, right? Um, that T-shaped leadership, that ability to be a builder and a creator and a rapid experimenter um, is critical for how fast the world is going in whatever industry you're in. Um, and so I think what Cornell Tech is both a real estate play, which as you see some pictures on the, on the screen here of what the campus looks like, but it's also an idea, right? It's a relevancy play of, and I think we, we hopefully bring that in to the program as a university where digital and, and technology is really a horizontal across our entire university because we think it's affecting every area, right? Whether you're the vet school or the College of Business, um, the S.C. Johnson College of Business or Cornell Tech. Um, and so we, I think some a similar story could probably be written about your industry and your organization is how digital is speeding it up, is changing it, is offering new opportunities, but also new threats. And so Cornell Tech is a, is a hopefully an enabler of the relevancy that this program might be for you as a leader. The other, so I mentioned, I'm throwing a bunch of shapes at you today, right? So one shape was the, the T, right? The T-shaped leadership I mentioned earlier, product management mindset. The other model that we like to think about as this program evolves is this, what we affectionately call the bow tie model, right? So you can hopefully see that on the screen, there's sort of a bow tie um, uh, if, if you're familiar with that. But this notion of being able to be big thinkers, right? Take what is happening from a technical expertise, what is happening from an industry standpoint, and boil it down into the middle of the bow tie, which is what we're calling insight creators, which is this notion of I can understand, I take a lot of information, and I can offer critical thinking, strategic thinking, systems thinking, new thinking mindsets to offer insights, come up with three, four, five, whatever the number is of insights that I need to address in this industry. But then to be able to go back out again, which is that sort of the second half of the bow tie, if you will, 
to offer influencing skills, leadership presence, the ability to tell a good story. Um, and so an example of this, if you think of you know any industry is I've got a keen industry of where I think the industry is going, right? It's the classic Wayne Gretzky quote of skate towards where the puck will be as opposed to where it was if you're, if you're a hockey fan. Um, so it's the technical expertise that you're bringing and the ability to create insights and then the ability to, those are great insights, but if you can't influence, can't tell a good story, um, they, they're not as much value creating is as opposed to I've got this keen insight on where the market's going, you know, think Netflix getting really into streaming, pivoting their entire business model um, or creating original content, right? If you think of Netflix's more recent pivot, that was it. That's what they thought the industry was going to. And then they were ability to communicate it and influence it. Now, obviously, when you look at their stock price recently, that's that's a little more challenging, but that's an example of how you could take a ton of information, boil it down in some insights and then influence out again. How that gets de delivered um, is, is through a series of live virtual sessions with Cornell University faculty members, some of which you see on screen here, and also access to the Cornell on-demand learning library, which are um, created by Cornell faculty and they're asynchronous modules that will complement your ability to, I just saw, for example, you know, you see Alan Philipowitz on getting things done. And I want to go take now a follow-up module through my on-demand library that I'll have access to as part of this program to learn more about that, right? So these are uh, live virtual sessions where you'll be interacting with the faculty. You'll be interacting with each other um, to, and that's part of the networking component. But as you think about, we, we had three sort of core modules that we wanted to dive into in this program. One was around thinking, right? So I mentioned earlier that ability to sort of think differently, right? Think more critically, think more systematically, think digitally, um, think as an entrepreneur, right? How do you see an opportunity and, and mobilize the organization for that? Um, and then the second, the second bit is how do you feel? And that gets into purpose-driven leadership or emotional intelligence or social intelligence, right? Some of these skills often get referred to as the navigation skills, right? How do I understand how somebody might be feeling that might impact my ability to communicate or to, to get the job done um, from a feeling standpoint? And then the last, of course, is the execution, the doing stage, right? Which is how do I lead in crisis? How do I tell a good story and be a better communicator? How do I negotiate if that's if I have to do that? Um, how do I have the financial acumen to understand how to navigate what the, the language of finance, which is the key, one of the key languages on a global basis? And then how do I lead innovation, right? How do I offer more experimentation? How do I offer um, you know different skill sets to, to, to do that? And so Obviously, you've seen some of this in, in the materials about BPM um, and just wanted to kind of walk you through the, the narrative around how do you think differently, how do you feel differently, um, and how do you do differently, um, you know, using that, using those sort of words to, to do that. And we think that if you walk through this skill, both the T-shaped leadership model and the bow tie will be more effective, right? You're able to think differently um, and navigate the, the, the broad end of the, of the um, bow tie. You're able to pivot at that where critical insights need to be developed, and then you can communicate back out again, right, in terms of the feeling, the doing, et cetera. So these are all Cornell University faculty that sit across different schools. Um, so Alan Philipowitz is within the Johnson School, the Johnson Graduate School of Management. Um, Karan Jarocha is at Cornell Tech. Neil Tarallo is at our hotel school or the Nolan Hotel School. Uh, Derek Cabrera is at the Brooks School um, within Cornell. Uh, and then there's other faculty that sit across different entities. Um, General George Casey, former chief of staff of the US Army. Um, so some really great faculty who understand both how to deliver this content, but more importantly, or maybe perhaps as important in this new world is how to deliver it in these types of sessions, right? How to do a live virtual session and, and give you a framework and provide opportunities for networking. So that's a key part of the delivery is that it will be done in a live virtual manner so that you don't have to leave your job. Um, it, it's a robust session of about 16 live virtual sessions. Um, and so there's a, there's a rigor to this, um, as you might expect from being able to engage with um, a Cornell, uh, get a Cornell certificate at the end of the program, um, which certainly is, a, is hopefully, a, we hope, a great carrot for you that will show that you've invested in yourself or you've been invested in. And now how do you take this forward in your, in your career? One other model I wanted to give you is uh, how to apply this. And more and more, um, we do a lot of work with very fast moving organizations that have fast moving individuals as part of those. The ability to drive experimentation is critical. Um, and the ability to form a hypothesis, to have an idea, 
right? Test that idea in practice, generate some feedback, and then review the results and then modify it. The faster the organizations, and I, I use fast realizing I, I talk quite quickly, so <laughs> my, my apologies for that uh, over the course of this webinar, but, but get excited about this sort of stuff, is the ability to understand a hypothesis, to test that peer theory, the faster you can spin what we sort of refer to as the experimentation wheel, right? The, the more successful and the more innovative you're going to be. Um, I think there's there's a lot of research that shows that. Um, and so certainly the, the organizations that do this well, the individuals that do this well, the individuals that set this type of culture on their teams are also critical, right? As a leader or a manager, you want to have your teams know that this is a process that they can do, right? They can come to you with an idea um, as, as, as long as they're willing to test it, get data around it and see, did that work and then modify it? Because that's how you innovate, right? You want to run you know, 10,000, 15,000, whatever number of experiments, um, it, much better than creating one or two experiments. The cost of, of not having those succeed if you're only running two experiments a year is, is, is huge, right? Versus if you're running hundreds of experiments. Um, so we wanted to get you to, as they go through, as you go through this program, come up with a lot of ideas that you want to test. Um, and hopefully you'll get a lot of, you know, you generate feedback on those ideas, you'll get, you'll get modifications to those. But we think this is a key part of, of innovating and learning and that lifelong learning part um, that Amrud and I were mentioning earlier, as we started this, uh, this webinar was around how do you experiment and do this, do this differently. As I mentioned, we were, Cornell is experimenting in a lot of uh, it, ways of learning. Um, the on-demand learning library is all done by Cornell University faculty, leveraging the, the world-class eCornell organization that is part of our, our organization. We're doing live virtual sessions. There's blended learning guides. So there's, um, there's hopefully gonna be virtual collaboration, though what we want you to do is then take that back to your world and drive collaboration back at your job, right? Um, take an idea of you know, how to think more critically and say, let me, let me have a discussion with my team or let's, have a let's use that model as we think about our strategy moving forward. So how do we take that forward is, is part of technology enabled learning. Um, as I mentioned, you're gonna have access to this. This is a double click on the on-demand learning library that you'll have access to. So there's a broad library of, of faculty sessions, many of which you'll see in a live virtual form. Um, and then there's also a, a blended learning guide, which is exactly meant for take that module and then share that back with your team um, as you think about taking that, taking that forward. Because really that's what this is all about, right? Education is great, um, it drives impact, but it drives impact only if you act on it and do things with it. So that's really what we were, we're trying to do. And Amruta, I'm, I know we're gonna pivot to, to questions. I always wanna leave with this sort of founding mission and many of you have these too for your organization. Cornell was founded in 1865 by Ezra Cornell with a, we think a very cool founding statement of, I would found an institution where any person can find instruction in any study. We try to live up to that by offering these multidisciplinary programs. But I encourage, I think it's hopefully a noble mission that Cornell University has in partnership in this program with XCD, um, and certainly encourage you to think about how do you connect your sort of founding mission, vision, values, either for yourself or for the organization, but also think about how do you then bring that into the digital world, right? How do you think about it in a new context? So um, really appreciate your interest in the program. We're thrilled to connect you with Cornell. And um, Amruta, if you would, I want to maybe tackle a few questions. Happy to do that as well. Sure. So, but before that, uh, Devin, thank you so much for sharing these thoughts because I'm sure those watching um, are, finding, are finding this really helpful. Uh, we have some questions in line. But before we take them, um, I would like to emphasize on a few points. And if I can, uh, uh, if you could stop sharing so that I can share my deck and uh, uh, take the sure. viewers through this. Okay. There you go. Okay, I, I hope you're able to uh, see my screen. Great. Yep. So, uh, so, sorry. So the idea is to just share some of the program highlights and some questions that have been coming our way. Uh, let me let me first focus on some of the highlights, uh, program highlights. So uh, here we mentioned that all our sessions are 100% live. That is over a period of next six months, you will be a part of live sessions that are being led by renowned and award-winning Cornell faculty. These are live sessions, which means you are actually in a virtual classroom, interacting and listening to faculty and your peers on real-time basis. These are highly engaging sessions with breakout discussions, query resolution with the faculty, uh, interacting with your cohort peers. These are not pre-recorded videos, but live classroom engagements. Uh, all of these taught by some of the finest faculties in the world 
who are based out of either New York City or Ithaca campus of the Cornell University, as uh, Devin mentioned. Upon successfully completing the program, you get a certificate issued by Cornell. Uh, it's the same certificate that you would have got if you would have probably uh, physically gone to Cornell and completed a program. Uh, our next um, uh, feature is smaller cohorts. So we limit the size of uh, the cohort for an impactful learning experience. Uh, now there is a lot of emphasis given to engagement and peer learning, which is possible probably only when you are in a smaller cohort. Uh, we thus limit the cohort size to not more than 50 to 60 participants in each cohort. And electives, uh, that's something that Devin mentioned. So although the course is just for six months, you have access to the eConnell uh, on-demand library for a period of one year. So the on-demand library, what we call as electives, are primarily self-paced modules that you undertake at your convenience. And there are, uh, and you have access to roughly around 1200 plus elective lessons to choose from. Uh, let me move on to the program structure. Uh, so uh, for every session, there is some kind of a prep material, which is shared a few days prior to the session. And there is some kind of a reflection material which is shared after the session is done. Uh, we call it pre-work and post-work. So pre-work uh, in this case can be uh, a case article, uh, a reading material, a video, or an assessment. It is primarily assigned to ensure that the participants are sufficiently aligned to what the faculty is going to be covering in the, in the uh, live session. And the post-work is to ensure you get an opportunity to reflect on what you have learned and apply the ideas in the given scenarios. Uh, we also have an external thought leader uh, who we will bring uh, in between uh, the course duration, uh, who brings with him industry experience to talk to you about what is happening in the industry and uh, what the future of work could look like. Uh, it's primarily to shatter your business as usual mindset. And uh, electives, uh, we spoke about electives and Devin mentioned too, that as you progress through the program, we want you to capture the breadth and the depth of what Cornell has to offer. Breadth in terms of the live plenary sessions and depth via access to the eConnell electives. Uh, you have access to 1200 plus electives and, um, uh, and you, have, uh, uh, you have beyond six months of the program duration to, uh, to continue your access to the, to the eConnell demand, uh, on-demand library. Uh, these, are, these are electives of roughly around 45 to 60 minutes, um, uh, self-paced modules uh, that allow you to take them at your convenience. Uh, these are not limited to any functions. So you have electives ranging from, uh, from various topics like leadership, to communication, finance acumen, uh, data analytics, uh, digital transformation, to just name a few. Um, uh, let's talk about our faculty director. So uh, leading all of this is our faculty director, Dr. Alan Filipovic, uh, Devin to mention about him. Uh, Dr. Filipovic is a former Dean of Executive Education at Cornell and is also a teaching faculty in this program. He's going to be uh, taking a couple of sessions uh, in this program. Uh, uh, in terms of his background, he did his postgraduate from Cornell, his MBA from Wharton, and his PhD from Harvard. And he comes with several decades of uh, teaching experience. Um, this is a draft certificate. This is a sample certificate of what it might look like once you com successfully complete the, uh, complete the program. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the participant profile. Uh, let's talk about the peers uh, that you're going to be with. Now, that's one of the core things that is being discussed when we design these programs. It's not just about what you're going to be learning, but whom you're going to be learning with. And, uh, and uh, this uh, slide primarily shows in terms of uh, some of the participants, our past participants and current participants, uh, the companies that they come from. So we have participants coming from uh, 3M, from uh, Boston Consulting Group, uh, from Cisco, from EY, um, HDFC, Google, IBM, JP Morgan, uh, just some of the companies just to, uh, to name them. And uh, most of our participants now across our five cohorts, our uh, average work experience of the participants is roughly around 18 years. Uh, of which 32% come from the work experience uh, bracket of 16 to 20 years. These participants come with 
deep uh, and rich background. Uh, so if you if you see some of our participants, they, they come from C-suite level. So we have participants at CEO level, CFO level, CTO level. Uh, we have uh, business heads, country heads, vice presidents. These are the kind of participants uh, and senior executives that we have in our program. And, and these are just some of the testimonials from uh, some of our uh, participants across cohorts. Uh, we have Eduardo from IBM in UAE. We have Karim, who's a group CFO at Etisalat Group, who's uh, based out of UAE. We have Deepak, who's from uh, Kotak UK branch. Uh, we have Rahul, uh, who's from Google. So we, these are some of the participants who have shared their experiences. And uh, finally, uh, our cohort, our cohort, our fifth cohort begins on, on 30th of July. Uh, and our deadline to apply for the course is 23rd July, which is this Saturday. Uh, there are limited seats available. So in case interested, please do uh, reach out to us uh, by, the, by the given deadline. And with that, I stop my screening and I will take some of the questions that are there uh, uh, that have come our way. So, um, so Devin, first question, uh, it's from Clive and he says, is the program relevant for people from any specific industry? It's a great question. And I, and I would say the answer is not necessarily. I would say that the, the part of the, um, part of the expertise sits across industries and actually what we want, and Amruta, as you were highlighting the clients who've gone through this, part of the breadth of information is cross industry perspectives, right? So when you hear questions from Google, you know, how does that relevant from a hinder group or, you know, link, you know, JP Morgan learning from LinkedIn, right? So I would say that the content is very relevant across almost any industry. And that's actually part of the design um, is to how do you think about cross industry perspectives to add value to your industry? So I would say that it's certainly a multi-industry uh, cohort and focus of content. Uh, our next question says, the eligibility reads a minimum of six years plus work experience. Is this course meant for senior leaders? So Amrita, you showed, a, I think, a fascinating graphic of while, yes, the requirement is six plus years, um, it is mo meant for those five different groups you showed, right? Um, everything from the core group being 16 years or so. So I think that certainly, um, you know, as a, as a senior leader, if you're trying to upskill and stay relevant, if you're an emerging high potential leader, this is a great program to do that. Um, and then the network across all of the levels and Ruta, that you showed when you showed the kind of the, where participants have come from. So I think it's for a, it's a leadership development program um, that sits across many different areas of where leaders could come from, from an experience standpoint. Sure. Uh, we just have a couple of minutes, Devin. So I'll, I'll just take next couple of questions that have come our way. Uh, so one question reads, could you elaborate on the networking aspect during this program? Yeah, so uh, so you saw an amazing graphic there around where previous participants have come from. So you know if you, that's part of the value of these kinds of in you know uh, quasi open enrollment programs, right? If you think about uh, you're as a leader at one group and you're going to now network with X number of people from cross industry. So the networking sits within your cohort. Um, part of once you finish the program, obviously you'll promote, I'm sure, your certificate on uh, social media or on other areas, and so you can access also and connect with cohorts from other cohorts, right? So there's, you know, we're in the fifth or sixth first cohort of this, you can network with other people who've gone through this program. Um, and that's really the ability to set up further growth conversations, growth networking opportunities. So the networking is both within the cohort, as you're all going to share a similar experience, but also within the, the brand of the program um, with it to connect to future cohorts or, or past cohorts, excuse me. Sure. And uh, Devin, if I may add, uh, you know, during the live sessions, it's not just that the faculty is speaking. Uh, one is highly encouraged to talk and ask questions and bring their domain specific knowledge, as you had mentioned earlier. And um, yep. additionally, uh, you know, we also have uh, uh, we have people coming together who probably would not have been uh, there together in a cohort otherwise. So uh, we yep. give them a structured platform to to create some kind of a peer learning, and we call that peer coaching. Uh, we get small groups of three or four people together, and we uh, we ask them to connect, share their ideas, bounce off uh, you know their ideas with their colleagues, share their assignment progress, and we primarily do that so that uh, part participants get to connect and towards the end of six months we primarily want to build a strong community uh, with uh, with participants across cohorts uh, and we have roughly around uh, 250 or such participants across mm -hmm. cohorts so build that community so that uh, so that that working experience goes beyond uh, beyond just the program 
That, that's exactly right. It's the classic, it's what you're learning, but who you're learning it with um, that is equally valuable of connections that you could then pick up the phone or set up a Zoom, you know, to talk deeper with somebody in a very different industry that might be a critical part of your network moving forward. So absolutely networking is a key part of this. Sure. Uh, a final question. Uh, is there any sort of knowledge assessment that makes me eligible for the certificate? So the certificate is primarily based on your successful accom uh, accomplishment of the program journey, right? So attend the sessions, actively engage with all the different activities, actively engage in the on-demand module. Um, and obviously from a program management standpoint, we, we do track that. So it's really a, you have to successfully engage in the fullness of this program um, in order to accomplish the, the, the certificate. Um, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll let you answer if there's anything specific you want to highlight, but it's really just the robustness of the delivery that at the end is um, if you've been actively involved and attended all the sessions and been an active contributor, um, you will you will earn the certificate. Sure. And uh, Devin, what you mentioned is true, that the program is fairly robust, rigorous, and one is being measured through the program. Uh, just to give an example, after every live session, there is a knowledge assessment. Uh, there is a knowledge assessment quiz, which is administered live. Uh, then uh, we have the self-paced electives, wherein there is a quiz towards the end of each elective basis, which uh, it is decided whether a person has completed the elective or no. Uh, we have the we have the application, the learning application, and it is gamified to an extent that you know we are able to assess uh, participants' engagement in the program. So yes, they are uh, assessed through the program in terms of how well they engage in the group and with the program. Uh, I also realize that uh, Devin, we are already uh, over time. Uh, so uh, so uh, whatever questions that we have, we will have our outreach team address them and get in touch with the concerned uh, people. Uh, but I would like to thank you for investing your time early in the morning and uh, spending this time with us. Thank you so much, Devin. Great. Happy to thank you, Amrita, for setting this up. And uh, great to be partnering with XED on this type of program. And thank you to the individuals who attended for your interest in this program and your investment in your own career development. Uh, we're, looking forward to, we're looking forward to potentially engaging with you and seeing you as part of the program as it moves forward. Thank you.